this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a long sleeve peacock. For this project, I've decided to turn it inside out. I'm going to be lining up the seams, and I just find it easier if the seams are on the outside. Now taking a washable marker, I mark out the center points. Once I get those marked out, I'm going to tuck one sleeve inside the other sleeve, line up all of the seams along the underarm and the shoulder, and then I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to shake it, and I'm going to lay one side flat against the table, and then I'm going to fold the other part on top of that. And what this does is it creates symmetry, and this process is called centering the shirt. And you'll hear me say, doing the sleeve inside the other sleeve technique. It's actually called centering a shirt. So when you do this method, what it does is it creates symmetry like a mirror. So if you're standing and looking at somebody from the front of the shirt, it has a mirror image and the saturation is all the same. And then if you're looking at them from the back, it has a mirror image and the saturation is all the same. And for most patterns, you wanna use this technique. Centering a shirt, it's not hard. It just takes a little bit of practice. I know when I first started tie dyeing, I was really intimidated by the process and I don't do them all the time. So I'm sure that I'm making it look a lot harder than it needs to be. But the things that I focus on is along the center point, you want it to line up really nice. And then from the underarm down to the bottom of the shirt, the fabric can kind of bunch up in there. You wanna make sure that it's not bunched up. And if you take your yardstick, you can sort of help smooth that out. And then since this is a long sleeve, you also wanna make sure that the fabric is lined up and nice and smooth, just the best that you can. Now let's create the peacock. I like to come down about one or two inches from the underarm I decide where I want the center of it to be, give it a little pinch, and I'm using the hemostat and the microwave splatter guard to create the pattern. My sleeves ended up being on the right side of the project, normally they're on the left, so I had to turn the hemostat counterclockwise to create the spiral. And just like any spiral, I just go around and around until I can't go any farther using the microwave splatter guard, and then I unclick the hemostat and I gently wiggle it out. I like to secure my spirals by using rubber bands. I just find them to be quick and easy. It's a matter of preference. You could also use kite string or sinew, but I go for quick and easy. And these are what I call my favorite rubber bands in the color purple. And I do have links for them down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie dye. So go ahead and check it out. So this entire project is backwards for me and I am left-handed and so it's my dominant hand. So I don't know if you caught that, but I had to flip the project over because what I'm doing now is I'm pulling on the loose tails and tucking them into the nearest rubber band to create a nice tight spiral. It just helps, that way if you have to like pick it up, move it around, flip it, whatever, it's not going to fall apart on you. And then using a washable marker, I mark out my pattern. And make sure if you do this, that all of your lines intersect through the center of the spiral. Now it's time for the fun part and my favorite part. We get to add the die. And I am doing an assembly line, but we're only going to focus on this one shirt, but they're going to be basically identical. I mean, you can't really make them totally identical because one shirt could be drier than the other. Maybe I add more dye to one or it gets more eyes. You know, it's tie dye, it, nothing is perfect. But I'm going to be going with the same color palette on this. And for this one, it's going to be a darker color palette. I don't usually work with the blacks and the grays very often. And so I thought it just would be a nice change of pace.
A lot of times I like to throw a wild card type of color in there. In this case, it's going to be eggplant because the shirt is predominantly going to be blues and grays, blacks. And then that punch of color, I hope will just draw your eye in and create contrast and interest. Moody Blue is a special order dye from Dharma Trading Company. And special order dyes, you have to order 10 pounds in order to get it. And I'm just not going to do that. So where I get the special order dyes is from Facebook. Kathy Sprague is who I work with and she has created a page called Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace. So if you're interested, I recommend that you go over there, follow the page, and when people are selling these special order dyes, you can get involved and get yourself some really cool colors. Next, I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. I wanna make sure that the pH stays up around 10.5 to 11. And then I add my ice. So for this project, I decided to create an ice barrier. That way I didn't have to fill the entire tote up with ice. I'm just trying to be conservative. And I have the empty dye jars there holding the silicone cake molds in place. Make sure they're empty dye jars, you guys. And then it's recommended that you let it batch for at least 24 hours at 70 degrees or higher. And I can tell you that this batched for the full 48 hours. Now look at that muck water. It looks scary, but trust the muck. Set it and forget it. Now it's time for the rinse out and you wanna start by using cold water to remove any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. So the cold water gets rid of the soda ash, the hot water removes the unbonded dye so it goes down your drain instead of into your washing machine. So once in the washing machine, I like to use Kirilon and that's a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. Then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft, and that's a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma. And if you look down below in the description box, you will find links. It just makes it easy for you to find, do your research. Then I put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our long sleeve peacock after it's been washed and dried and ironed. And I think it turned out really pretty. I don't normally make these dark projects, but when I do, I'm so happy with the results. The standout color for me in this one ended up being the Nebula Navy. Remember me saying that I wanted it to be the eggplant? The eggplant is just sort of like a, a complimentary boost in this whereas the nebula navy is the more dominant color and i'm fine with that because i think it looks really pretty now keep in mind if you don't want to do long sleeve shirts right now you could do this on a short sleeve shirt you could do it on a dress a bag whatever it's more about color combinations and how they react with one another and i think it turned out really pretty so what do you guys think please leave me some comments down below Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie dyeing.